اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Welcome لسان القرآن Easier than English Lesson number 3 The Grammatical Gender of an Ism The key learning outcome of this lesson is to look at the grammatical gender of an ism. In particular, how to identify every ism, uh, whether it is to be treated as masculine or feminine. And of course, we're going to look at the impact of that in the practical session in sentences and phrases. Let's quickly clarify what we mean by grammatical gender. Again, these are terminologies can be some quite confusing terms sometimes. Now, in English, I'm saying he is a king, she is a queen. If I said in English, she is a, uh, she is a king or he is a queen, of course, I'm going to get myself into trouble. Or if I say uh, she are books, again, it doesn't make any sense in the English language. So in English, the word king is treated grammatically as masculine. In Arabic, the word for he is hua. And the word for king is Malik. So, huwa Malikun, he is a king. Now, the word for she in Arabic is here. So, let's put that one in. Here. Here, Malikatun, she is a queen. Next, we have two more at the bottom, which you can see. It is a Quran. Now, the word for it in Arabic, we have no choice but to use huwa. There is no word for it in the Arabic language. So huwa and of course Quran spelled huwa Quranun. In lit Arabic, literally, I'm saying he is a Quran. Of course, it should be translated in English as it is a Quran. Or I, for, with paradise, I will say here she. Here Jannatun, it is a paradise or it is paradise or it is a garden, whichever translation we want to use. Now in English, I'm using this word, I'm treating this word as masculine. I'm treating the word queen as feminine and I'm treating the word Quran here as neutral in uh, grammatically speaking, also the word paradise. But in Arabic, I'm treating the word king as masculine. I'm treating the word queen as feminine. But I'm treating the word Quran, the word itself, as masculine and I'm treating the word paradise or garden as feminine. So you can see in Arabic, grammatically speaking, I've got no choice but to treat every single word, ism, either as masculine or feminine. This is what I mean by gram grammatical gender. It's not really interested whether thing is masculine or feminine, male or female. It's only interested how the language treats it. And this is what we mean by grammatical gender. So in Arabic, every ism has to be grammatically treated either as masculine or or feminine, whereas in English you've got masculine, feminine, and the neutral gender. And that's the major difference between the grammatical treatment of nouns in English and nouns in Arabic. You're already familiar with the fact that in Arabic, an ism has to be treated either as masculine or feminine. This subject can be relatively complex for English speaking students because in English we have a neutral gender. And it's relatively simple to identify the neutral gender in English with some practice. Now, in Arabic, you don't have that. So every ism will have to be treated either as masculine or feminine. In order to travel through this subject relatively easily, I have, alhamdulillah, designed a very simple map, which you can use and inshallah use right throughout your study to identify whether an ism should be treated as masculine or feminine. So these are the steps you're going to follow. I'm going to introduce the map first. And then in the lesson, inshallah, we'll go through each of the element of the map itself. So the first question you ask when you come across an ism that you're not familiar with, you ask the question, is this ism referring to something real or not? By that, I mean, is it referring to something uh, biologically male or female? And something that in English you would use it for he or she. If it is, is yes, then you will treat it as it is. Just like in the English language, he or she with anything that is biologically male or female. If it's not, which will be majority of the words you're likely to come across, no, then you ask the first question for non-real words. First question, does it have a sign? There are three signs to identify whether an ism should be treated in Arabic as feminine or not. If it has the signs, you will treat it as feminine. 
if it doesn't have these three signs, any of these three signs, you will then ask the question, does it belong to any of the categories of isms in Arabic, which have been used as feminine in the Arabic language? Yes, then you'll treat it as feminine. If not, then you'll treat it as masculine. So the default position is that it is mask to be treated as masculine unless it has a sign or belongs to the one of the categories of usage. This is the map you need. This is all that you need, inshallah ta'ala, to deal with every single ism that you're likely to come across, uh, inshallah. And we're going to go through this map now in some detail. So there's a lot to cover, inshallah. So let's begin. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. So your first step in identifying the grammatical gender of an ism is to identify whether it's real or not. So you ask the first question whether it's, the word is referring to something which is real, biologically real male or not. If it is yes, then you'll treat it as it is in the Arabic language. Treat it as it is. If it's not, you'll move it down to the next box, which is non-real. Now for real, if the word is referring to something which is real female, meaning biologically female, you will always treat it as feminine. If the word is referred to something biologically male, you will always treat it as masculine. Please remember this golden rule. So let's look at some examples of real masculine, real feminine. Without any doubt, you can look at the words on the screen. I'm quite confident you'll be able to tell me whether it should be treated masculine or feminine. Akhun, brother, I'm sure you will say it should be treated masculine. Ukhtun, sister, feminine. Abun, father, masculine. Ummun, mother, feminine. No questions asked, very simple. Malikun king, masculine. Malikatun, queen, feminine. Naqatun, which is a female camel. Well, that should be treated feminine. And Jamalun, which is a male camel, should be treated masculine. So I hope you get the idea. Reality is reality. There is no exception to this rule. So whenever you see a word that is referring to real male, real female, you'll treat it as it is and it's very simple. So the next question comes in, what to do with those words that are non-real, like the sun, the moon, the star, chair, table, uh, pen, computer, mouse, etc., etc., keyboard, whatever word that is that you're likely to come across. How do I treat it? Do I treat it as masculine? Do I treat it as feminine? What do I do? Now, one step would be, of course, that you can learn every single word and its meaning and also its gender. But the easier is to follow this map, inshallah, and to be able to be relatively confident on how to use that particular word whether it should be uh, treated as masculine or feminine so after you remove the real words you're left with non-real words so your second step when you look at non-real words is to go through and ask two questions number one does it have a sign yes then you'll treat it as feminine and we'll go through the sign shortly inshallah if it doesn't have a sign, you ask the question, does it belong to any of the categories where it should be treated as feminine? If it is, you treat it as feminine. Otherwise, you will treat it as default as masculine. So from now on, we're talking about non-real words, non-real biologically male or female, I mean. And this is the map that you'll follow for identifying them because this is where the real complexity is. In, uh, and we can sail through this relatively quickly, inshallah. There are three signs to look for which appear at the end of the word to indicate whether that ism should be treated as feminine or not. And they are ta marbuta, which is translated as tied up ta. I'm sure you're familiar with it from your Arabic reading, also called round ta by some people. And it is a sign of a word to be treated as feminine. In fact, this is the most important sign. Overwhelming majority of the words that you're likely to come across, which are going to be treated as feminine, will have this sign at the end. So please note this one, very important. I'm going to give you the other two and briefly mention them for so that you can have a comprehensive set of notes. But we will be dealing with them at the intermediate level, inshallah, as we will, when we begin to learn categories. Next, we have what's called Alif Mamduda. And Alif Mamduda is Alif followed by Hamza. Alif followed by Hamza is also another sign of a word to be treated as feminine. Again, it's right at the end of a word. The third one, Alif Maksura. Alif Maksura again appears at the end of a word and that is a sign that that word should be treated as feminine. Again, please note we're dealing with non-real words. So these are the three signs that you look for at the end of a word to identify whether the word should be treated as feminine or not in the language. So let's begin by taking a closer look at the first sign. The first sign 
is called the ta marbuta and it is the most common sign that you're going to see and it's used for many many common words that we use every day in our in our salah in our uh, quran reading of course but in everyday arabic we come across these words and these are all to be treated in arabic as feminine and it is the prime sign overwhelming majority of the isms that we will treat as feminine will come with this sign at the end so let's look at some example madrasatun is a school we will treat that as feminine because it has tamar at the end kabiratun is an adjective it means big so that is also feminine same as muslimatun female muslim ghurfatun room sayyaratun a car qaryatun a village Salah or Salatun, as you know, is prayer, the five daily prayers. Kalimatun, word, will be treated also as feminine. Suratun, Surah of Quran, is feminine. Ayatun, Ayah of Quran. Niyatun, intention. Zaka, many, many words that you come across with ta marbuta at the end. This is your prime sign of a word to be feminine. So whenever you see this sign, except for very rare exceptions, which I'll share with you, you will always, always treat those words as feminine. And please note this one. Let's take a closer look at some of the features of this. Few points about reading ta marbuta, I'm sure you're familiar with. This is called the round ta or tied up ta. Now you'll see on the right hands, I've got two words. Uh, and there's two different ways of writing ta marbuta, which you can see depending on if the letter before it connects to it or not. I'm sure you're familiar with this. Now, when it comes to reading this word, I will read this word in English. Let me write it down in English transliteration, uh, like so. Muslima tun. Muslima tun. You can see the tanween sound coming at the end, which is the nun sakin sound I've told you about many, many times. But if I do not uh, if pronounce the vowel at the end, if I do not pronounce the vowel at the end, which is the rule in Arabic, whenever you stop, you do not pronounce the final vowel. Because we are studying, we're going to read the final vowels, of course. But normally, you read this word as Muslima. So the word is being read, or the letter is being read as a ha. I'm going to read this as Muslima. Same thing with the word uh, below. I've got Kabiratun, as you can see, the tun sound at the end, and if I read it normally, Kabira, Kabira. So I end with a ha. So the the tamar buta is read as a ha when you stop at it and don't apply any vowel sound. When you apply it, you read it as a normal ta. You would with the vowel sound being applied. So don't confuse this letter with the letter ha, which is written like so. And at the end of a word, it can also be written like so if it connects to the word before it. So these are the two ways you can see it written. In the middle of a word, it will be, for example, it'll be written like so, the haba. So this ha, which comes at the end, is not the same as the ta marbuta. And it's easy to distinguish between the two. You've got two dots here, which indicate, uh, which you can see very clearly. If you look at those words, you'll see two dots at the top. That's ta marbuta, and the other one is ha. Again, only when it comes to the end of the word, you pronounce it as ha. Please note these differences. I'm sure you know them, but it's quite important to note them from the beginning because, of course, language is mainly about hearing, but we might not or might or might not realize that there is a ta marbuta at the end, and that word should be treated as feminine. For example, if I say sola, zaka, the name hamza, you will not realize necessarily that there is a ta marbuta at the end. So please note this point down about ta marbuta. We're going to learn a very, very important skill in Arabic now, inshallah. If you recall, previously I shared with you another one, which, was, which you will commonly use. For example, I have the word baitun, which means a house. And if I want to make that into the house, i.e. an indefinite word to definite, I put al in front and I will remove the tanween as you already know this Alhamdulillah from your practice it will become al baytu. so you can see I can convert a common noun to definite now we're going to learn a skill on converting a masculine word to feminine again something you're going to have to do quite frequently in Arabic so how do you convert from masculine to feminine it's very very simple all you need is three simple steps the first step is you go to the word which is his base the uh, the uh, base, for example, here, mu'min. Mu'min means a believer. And you add a fatha to the end of the word. You, whatever is there you remove, you put a fatha. So your first step, number one, which you can see here, is to put a fatha. So that's your first step. First step is to add a fatha. The second step for you is to add the round ta or the ta marbuta 
Okay, that's your second step. The third step is put whatever tanween, whatever uh, ending you need to do. So in most cases, 85% of the time, we can use the tanween. So we will use mu'minatun in the rafa status. Of course, it will be mu'minatan in nasab and mu'minatin in jar. Very, very simple. So you go to the base form of the word, you add a fatha, then you add the ta marbuta, and you put whatever uh, Arab you need to, whatever the vowels, vowels that you need to at the end. So let's do that with two more words. We got here the word kafir, which means someone who rejects faith. So kafira tun, simple. Always fatha. Please note, before the ta marbuta, you will always, always put a fatha, nothing else. And then we have kafira tan. And you have kafira tin. So you can see always fatha on the last word, last letter, tamar buta at the end, and whichever we need to do. Lastly, we have saleh, which means pious. And we're going to convert that to feminine. We put fatha on the last letter, and the tamar buta and the tanween at the end. Okay, you can see the very simple steps. Always, always you'll follow this simple step, and you can convert a masculine to feminine in this way of course you can go vice versa by removing the tamar buta and removing the fatha and placing whatever you need to place depends on the role or the function that the word is doing in the sentence so very 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 simple skill alhamdulillah two very commonly used one one conversion from indefinite to definite and now conversion from masculine to feminine please note these steps step one place a fatha on the last letter step two add the round ta and step three, whichever vowel, vowel that you need to put on, at the end you'll put it on. And this is how to convert a masculine word to feminine. So what I'd like you to do now, like we've done exercises before, is look at these words that you can see on the screen. I've given you the translations of them. I would like you now, in the grey box part of it, put the feminine version. Feminine version, inshallah, of the same words. And not only that, this one, which you have at the end, which is mushrikatun, which means a female idol worshipper, I want you to give me the masculine version of that word. So you know, you know what to do, pause the video, please have a go at doing the uh, exercise and come back to me once the task is complete. I hope you've done the exercise, let's do them together inshallah. Ah. Remember I'm not allowed to touch anything but the end, so I put fatha at the end. Okay, عابدتن. Let's look at this one. Munafiqun. Munafiqatun. Munafiqatun. Salihun. Salihatun. Salihatun. Okay, and we have Sagirin. Okay, and that will be Sagiratin, Sagiratin. Okay, you can see that, Alhamdulillah. Very, very simple step. Let's go to the last one. Qasiratun. Again, you can see exactly the same principle, same step followed, nothing complex at all. We want to go backwards on this one. So what do we need to do? Well, let's copy it and I'll show you what you need to do. Very simple. You will check, first of all, get rid of the tamar buta. Let me do that slowly. Get rid of the tamar buta. And you're left with mushrik. Of course, the, the, whatever it will be. Either mushrikun, mushrikan or mushrikin. And that's all you need to do, inshallah. A very simple step of conversion from masculine to feminine. I hope you did the exercise and I hope it's beneficial. Please do it. Otherwise, you'll not be able to uh, use it. And if you don't, can't use it, you'll lose it after the lesson. You'll have many words where you will see the masculine and feminine equivalent. So, for example, let's go through what's on the screen. Muslimun, muslimatun. Mu'minun, mu'minatun. Salihun, salihatun. Abidun, abidatun. Mushrikun, mushrikatun. So you can see now how easy it is to convert from one to the other. Then we have on the other side, we have some adjectives. These are all descriptive words here on this list. So we have, for example, kabirun, kabiratun. Sagirun, sagiratun. Kathirun, kathiratun. Qalilun, qalilatun. Qaribun, qaribatun. 
So you can see many, many words where you will have masculine and feminine. Please note this rule only applies to certain categories of words and you'll become familiar with which, which, which ones inshallah as we progress. But for now, note that you can't do that with every word. Of course, there are things that are names. For example, ayah. Ayatun. Ayat is the name of a unit of Quran. There is no feminine equivalent. So it's not a descriptive word. So usually it's descriptive words and titles, that kind of thing that have masculine feminine equivalent we have column and pen there is no female female equivalent to that it's not a description it's not an adjective so therefore there is only one word in arabic for pen column it's not a living thing so there is no male and female equivalent either sayyaratun car there is no masculine equivalent car is car and the car is of course in arabic to be treated feminine why because got tamar buta at the end niyatun intention intention there is no masculine equivalent to that word jannatun paradise there is no masculine equivalent to that word so you can't do it to every word soon inshallah you'll get the type that you can do but for now note that many adjective descriptive type words will have a masculine and fem feminine equivalent and you now know how to convert one from the other so all you can do is from the base form make them and this is the beauty of arabic you don't have to le le learn lots of words masculine feminine equivalent whatsoever you just simply learn them uh, one and you know how to convert where it's necessary one word of caution and a lot of people say this is an exception. In my view, it is not an exception. Now, please take a look at the words at the bottom. I have Mu'awiyatu. I have Hamzatu. I have Talhatu. I have Khalifatu. In all of these words, I have got Ta Marbuta at the end. But I will not treat them as feminine. Why? Because the, remember the golden rule I told you? Reality is reality. These are names of male persons. So therefore, my first rule will kick in. As soon as you know that this word is referring to a male person, you'll treat it as masculine. If you know that this word is referring to a feminine person, you'll treat it as feminine. You will not look for any signs. So it really isn't an exception, but just note not every word that has tamarbut at the end will be treated as feminine. There are some words in Arabic which refer to male beings and they've got tamarbut at the end, therefore they are treated as masculine why because of step number one the first and most important rule i told you which is reality is reality if you stop there you will not make this mistake inshallah the second sign of something being feminine is alif mamduda i'm briefly going to go through them as we will be studying them these in detail when we study types of nouns and and detailed analysis of words inshallah but for now please note it is called an elongated alif and it is written in Arabic with an alif followed by a hamza, which you can see very clearly in there in the first example. And these deal belong to certain categories. It's a bit early for us to go into that. Just note that there will be exception. For example, Zakaria. Again, it's not really an exception. It is a male person. So they will be uh, treated as masculine according to my rules that I've already shared with you. So there are some words which end with alif. Mamduda, which is Alif followed by Hamza, and it's called a protective Hamza. And the examples are on the screen for you. Sahra'u, Darra'u, Bayda'u, Hamra'u. So there are categories, for example, colors is one, which are treated as masculine and feminine, and this is the feminine ending for them. The third sign of something to be treated as feminine in Arabic is called Alif Maksura. Now this one is quite confusing for us beginners because it looks like a Ya. It is, looks like a Ya, dotless Ya written at the end of the word. Please note this word is, uh, this letter is not Ya, it is actually Alif. Alif can be written two ways at the end, Ya without dots or the normal Alif that you and I are familiar with. And there are certain categories of words that had, have this ending and these endings is called the, this ending is called Alif Maksura, shortened Alif in translation. We will just call it shortened Alif if we need to or, or the Alif that looks like Ya at the end of the word, only at the end of the word, please note. So examples here for you, Husna, Bushra, Sughra, Kubra, and of course the famous word Ad Dunya, which is written with a normal Alif. Which one is written with a normal alif? Which one's written with a ya? There are rules, inshallah. It's a bit early at this stage. When we go into sarf, we will look at them in more detail. But for now, again, please note, there will be many words which will have alif maksura at the end, but will not be masculine. Why? Look at the examples I've given for you here. Names of famous prophets. Musa, Isa, Yahya. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be uh, blessings and peace be upon all of them. So we have three prophets there whose names end with Alif Maksura, of course they are male, so they will be treated as masculine in the language. Note the exceptions.
Let's now quickly go through the list of categories of isms that are treated as feminine in the Arabic language based upon usage. The first category is body parts in pairs. Again, take examples that I've given you on the screen. Yadun, hand. Ainun, eye. Qadamun, foot. Rijlun, leg. And Udhunun, ear. Now these are parts of the body that I have two of. So if you put your hand here, you'll see I've got two ears, two eyes, two hands, two legs, etc. So the words of the parts of the body that are in pairs will be treated in Arabic as feminine. So hand, eye, foot, leg, uh, ear examples, and these are used in the Quran. So they are treated as feminine. Now we also have parts of the body, for example, anfun nose, I have a rasun head, and I have a lisanun, which is tongue. Now, all of these are treated as masculine. Parts of the body that are in pairs will be treated in Arabic as feminine. Next category are the names of places. Cities, towns, countries, and sometimes some tribes as well are treated in Arabic as feminine. For our example, very simple examples will do Misru, Egypt, London, London, Makkah to Makkah, Ashamu, Sham, Syria, Arum, Arumu, Arom exactly etc 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 next category we like to, to come across are words that are used for wine uh, wind and fire so there are some examples examples here jahannamu hellfire rihun wind sarsarun cold wind khamrun wine narun so these types of words are treated as feminine in the arabic language the fourth category i've called the miscellaneous because they belong not to the signs they don't have the sign of being feminine i don't they do not belong to any of the categories i mentioned so far and there are not don't not many of them in the arabic language i don't think there are more than 20 or so but far as quranic arabic is concerned i don't think you're going to come across any more than what's on the screen so there are a few exceptions which don't fall into the sign which don't fall into any of the categories i call the miscellaneous and they're here for your uh, note inshallah harbun war Darun house, Nafsun self, please note that is going to come across quite a few times in your studies. Shamsun sun, Ka'sun cup, Ardun earth, Bi'run well, and Dalun bucket. Few words that are miscellaneous, you just need to note them. So you've got your categories, the final one, just miscellaneous words, some you just have to know and remember through usage, inshallah ta'ala. So please make a note of these miscellaneous words. The fifth category is not really taught until you get to sort of advanced or intermediate level Arabic. But let me share it with you because I want you to have a comprehensive set of notes. I don't want you to spend all your time writing notes and collecting books and notes and things like that. You don't need it, inshallah. This will suffice for you. So there is a group of words in Arabic language which are called aqil, aqil and the others are called ghayru aqil. Now, let me explain what they are simply, inshallah. It's not that complex. Any word or any ism in the Arabic language that deals with angels, jinns or humans are called rational beings everything else is called non-rational so aqil rational non-rational please note plurals of uh, non-rational i.e everything else their plurals are treated in arabic as singular feminine not only feminine but a singular feminine we will cover this rule inshallah in detail after we've done some study of broken plurals and others but for now please keep that as a note just a simple note will do and you can only write down, for example, plurals of non-rational treated as singular feminine. Even rational beings, their broken plurals can be treated as singular feminine. Let's finally go through them up one more time so we can review what we have studied in this lesson. First principle. Every ism will be treated in Arabic either as masculine or feminine, no neutral gender. So when you come across a word, you will ask the first question, does this word real, belong to the real category? Does it uh, refer to a word in English normally I would use he or she with, i.e. is it biologically male or female? If it is, you stop there and you treat it as it is. You don't ask any further question. If it is not, you move it over to the non-real category. In the non-real category, you start off with the first question, does this word have a sign? If it doesn't have a sign, then you ask yourself, does it belong to any of the categories or which are used as feminine in Arabic language? The signs are, I'm sure you can remember by now, first one, ta marbuta, the tied up ta, the round ta, which is the most common sign of something being feminine. And you've got examples here, three for you, jannatun, paradise, kabiratun, big, madrasatun, school. Then we have the Alif Mamduda, which is an alif followed by Hamza, 
protective hamza again there are categories of these these are only here for reference and you have some examples here for you also sahra sauda and safra so you have desert black yellow are examples these are feminine words in arabic language and then we have alif maksura which is the again appears at the end looks like a dotless yeah and again there are categories of these kubra sughra husna are three examples for you if it does not have these three signs then you ask the next question does it belong to the category of usage first category body parts in pairs we'll just take one example yadun hand next category names of places again example misr egypt third category wine wind or fire example narun fire and does it belong to the miscellaneous words and given you given you a list earlier shamsun sun nafsun self darun house and ardun earth does it belong to any of those categories it will be treated as feminine in the arabic language if not you will treat it as masculine so the default position is it will be treated as masculine unless it has a sign or it belongs to one of the categories of usage and finally don't forget broken plurals of non-rational beings primarily are used as singular feminine in the arabic language this is all you're going to need take a picture of this keep it on your side inshallah as part of your notes and this will guide you through most complex subject for english speaking students which is how to identify the grammatical gender of an ism i hope and pray inshallah has been uh, beneficial for you you will not need to read lots of notes you will not need to read lots of books you not, don't need to make any extra research for now until you get to the intermediate level this will guide you inshallah very simple because again remember we're not here to learn arabic grammar we're not here to learn rules we are here to learn arabic to understand quran so what is necessary and simple we will go for inshallah ta'ala so please make a note of this and of course if you can do a better design please do so i'm no artist inshallah ta'ala and i would prefer you to actually draw it by hand because it will then stick in your mind a lot more inshallah alhamdulillah that's all i wanted to share with you as far as the subject of the grammatical gender of an ism is concerned i hope and pray that you found the subject not as complex as you may have feared and i hope inshallah that the notes i've given you will be of benefit for you please feel free to make your own notes keep some basic notes with you inshallah you can always refer back to the video the one of the benefits of being online and available to you inshallah and it's been made with that purpose all the effort that's going to produce these videos is to help you learn arabic in a very simple way as best as we can make it we seek the forgiveness of Allah if there's any complexities in it or if we made any mistakes in it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. But if there is anything of benefit and you're benefiting from it, we, pray, we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. All praises and thanks are due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and reward you for taking part in the program. Please do give us your feedback and let us know how you're getting on. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. الذي علم بالقلم